Hello and welcome back to Shelf Center. This is Bryce. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks for liking and subscribing. If this is something you end up enjoying, you never know, it could happen. Anyway, this is my top shelf news for this week. It's been a bit, but this is my update on the latest in book news and media news as they relate to science fiction, fantasy, sometimes horror. Lots of book covers and everything, and it's going to look like I just copied Daniel Green, but I promise I actually saw these earlier and uh, had them all written down. But I do actually have one big one, that's why I needed to do this. I know it's not Tuesday News Day, as I promised in my year in review, but it is. Uh, sometimes news just comes and you only have a certain uh, time frame in which to uh, provide the news. So anyway, I thought I'd jump right into the book news and the reason for this. So the book news and the reason for this, uh, you know, emergency news here is I wanted to make sure and talk about, because I promised I would, uh, Davis, and I, I, know, I get zero pay from this, and you'll see that there is no pay really to be done on this. But anyway, Davis Ashura, uh, we actually go way back to SFF World. He may or may not remember me from that. I go by a different name now, uh, not just my, my moniker then or whatever. As it is now 10 years as a published author, Davis is offering essentially his whole back catalog for free from the 16th to the 20th. Obviously the 16th's already passed, uh, but you still have some time to grab, what is it like? I think it's 12 free books, and then it also coincides with the release of his latest book, which is not free, but holy cow, he's given you so many books. It's like, you might as well just even buy the, the latest one. You know I took advantage of this, but I've been loving seeing just all the success that, that Davis has been doing and, and everything. And anyway, so definitely take advantage of the free books. There's a lot of them, and again, they're they're pretty dang popular. There's a new release, the new cover, Steel Sharpens. This is Eternal Ephemera number two. So, you know, do yourself a favor and get you some Davis Asura, and, uh, you know, let me know how it goes. I would love to hear it, but I promise I'd make this announcement. Like I've always said, I, I love... Uh, whether it's traditional or indie publishing, I'm a big fan of the world that we have right now. It's a golden time to be alive, to have so much at our disposal to read. The problem is my TBR is ridiculously out of control right now, and it's it's never, I mean, let's be honest, it's, it's not changing, and it's only getting worse. All right, now <laughs> into news that pretty much just mimics Daniel Green. Uh, but the one that I thought was interesting, this just popped up on Twitter one day, was that Keanu Reeves has got comic book series Berserker, uh, no vowels in that, uh, just Berserker looks like this will be published July 23rd, 2024, so this year. So he's teaming up with China Miaville, uh, and I apologize for that mispronunciation, I'm sure. But the Book of Elsewhere is what it's going to be. So the team up of Keanu Reeves, China Miaville, I think it's, I don't know, this just sounds cool. I mean, you know it's going to be written well uh, if it's Miaville. I read, I've only read Kraken, actually. Uh, I started Perdido Street Station, and I need to try it again because I've heard a lot of people talk really well about it. It was so weird and hard to like, I think at the time I wasn't quite ready for it. And now that I'm a little more experienced with the weird stuff, I feel like it might be right up my alley. The Book of Elsewhere, I just, it sounds cool, and it's coming out here soon. Looks like it's based in that same world of the Berserker series that Keanu Reeves has been working on. Um, I, love, I mean, that's one one more reason, yet another. Like, we needed more reasons to like Keanu Reeves because he likes, like, he's a fantasy nerd. I mean, I, I, and of course, I mean, a lot of the movies that he's in, sci-fi, uh, fantasy, all that kinds of stuff. It, like, clearly it's something he has a passion for, especially when he's publishing his own work and, like, and now, I guess, writing. And I'm sure, you know, it's, I, I just assume, maybe I shouldn't, uh, that it's more of the ideas, the ideas man of the group and that, that Meville's doing the writing and probably the best way to go you know the the, the well-regarded published author you just kind of let them go at it but anyway that's cool good news all right then we've got this new release it looks like from orbit i've heard only good things about the author this is devin madsen i heard only good things about uh, a previous series this new one between dragons and their wrath i gotta say the title kind of feels clunky to me it's like too much between Dragon Land and Wrath, blah, blah, blah. 
I it just anyway. I know Daniel Green said he loved it, and I, I, you know, to each his or her own. But I just, I felt like it was a little bit of a mouthful. Hand me that between dragons and the wrath, like it just, it's, it's kind of like I don't know. I like what it evokes. I do. I have to admit that it, that is kind of cool. But it just is like wrath or dragons wrath. I don't know. Maybe just that. But it just anyway. I'm probably the only one, and I'm happy to be the only one. <laughs> I hope it does well, and I hope that everybody loves the title, and I'm the only stupid person that doesn't. Then we've got a cover for The Doors of Midnight by R.R. Beardy, and I apologize for any mispronunciation of that name. This is the sequel to the first binding. I kind of, I made mention of this in my anticipated fantasy for the year. I I have my concerns. Um, they're they're Because of Matt's fantasy book reviews, he was not a huge fan of the first binding, and I really trust his uh, thoughts on things. He said it's very much a carbon copy, pretty much. Uh, again, his opinion. The Name of the Wind at the same time. Did I like The Name of the Wind? Would I take more than The Name of the Wind? Have I read books like that are very similar to other books? For instance, uh, The Unremembered I read and I liked and it was pretty much you could just be like, yeah, these are all the Wheel of Time people. <laughs> like I could figure out who's the Wheel of Time what. And I still liked it, so I could still imagine myself liking this. But then to name the sequel The Doors of Midnight is just kind of funny. I don't know. I just can't not remark about the fact that <laughs> this book now also like has the same similar title to a book in the King Killer Chronicles. That's that's not out technically, so this beats it. All right, then this is something I just thought was fun. This was coming up on, on uh, Twitter, and then I saw it on Daniel Green's channel. Okay, not a complete copycat, uh, but the BookTubers, I love seeing this. BookTubers are having a Kickstarter with their own individualized pins. I just think it's so cool. Uh, I don't think I dislike any of them, but you have like Daniel Green's got one, Patrick Leo, um, Man Carrying Thing. Um, I just, like each one I look at, I'm like, I want that one. I mean. Patrick's got his dog, Chuckle Boy, and it's so cute <laughs> with a sword. I just think it's so cool. I, I like seeing booktubers do well, and it just makes me happy. Maybe one day I could do well. So, um, all right, then final book news before I get into pretty much just Star Wars media news. Tor.com is changing its name, and so it's got a complete change. Tor.com has been doing its own publishing um, I guess I haven't known how like intertwined they've been with uh, Tor itself or not. I always just assumed it was the same company, but they're changing their name to Reactor, and I don't know if that's. I assume that's going to also extend to the publishing arm. I mean, I've got I got System Collapse here, and it's published by Tor.com. Let me get to the bottom of this, and it is published by Tor Tom <laughs> by Tom Doherty Associates, which is Tor Publishing Group. So, I guess they are together in at least publishing. But essentially, the Tor.com like is getting the change to Reactor. So maybe it's the the publishing itself isn't. I need to go maybe editing. Bryce can insert something in here. But Reactor is the new at least website, and uh, you know gets tons of views. Does great. I've reference tons of our of, of articles over the years they've done great read-throughs of like the mouths and book of the fallen um, all kinds of great stuff again over the years published just short stories and they make it on you know the hugo and, and all these awards and whatnot so they do well they've done well over the years but uh, one thing i guess i didn't know <laughs> and then maybe what they're trying to emphasize here is that they're not really tied because I, I knew they, they talk about anything right they did a king killer chronicle reread and of course, that's not published by Tor. Uh, so I knew they've always just kind of like featured just what's good in fantasy and science fiction. Um, but they're really, I think, trying to, to really be clear that, hey, we're not just Tor, we're, we're neutral here. Um, anyway, seems like a good, probably a good move. Uh, I assume the same people will keep tuning in there as long as they have good content, right? That's what matters. So hopefully, again, done well. Hopefully they continue to do well. All right, then on to the medias. Uh, we've got, first of all, before I get into my Star Wars news, <laughs> there's a lot of it uh, that I wanted to address. Uh, first of all, the Cradle Animation Kickstarter, it's been live. It Day one almost got to halfway of its goal of a million, which is quite a bit, but it is, it's an animation and it's trying to, you know, it's got, it takes a lot of money to, to do it well. And that's what we all want. We all want it done well. So these have, this one's starting at least at a way higher point than the usual 
Cradle, Will White Kickstarters have been, um, which have done quite well though, and even reached a million um, eventually. <laughs> Uh, but this was pretty, I mean, it's, it's, this is pretty a big, it's a pretty big one. Uh, I have to say, you know, my son definitely wants me to contribute. Uh, and some of the, the, the rewards levels are pretty cool. Like a thousand dollars gets you a ticket in to see a screening, uh, in, in LA, you don't, you know, it doesn't cover anything else, just that ticket in, um, and 10,000, you get to be a co-executive producer, which is pretty cool. Um, I definitely not going to be at those tiers. It's just the, the problem I have is just, I do want to see it, but I care about books more, and I just, this is one where I'm like, I'll save my, my money for, like, the, the special leather-bound editions, but I don't know about really going all in as much as I know my son would love me to spend all my money on it, and uh, I, I just don't know if it's for me to actually go for the animation, but I think it's cool. I hope it does well. Some of the, the stretch goals involve new cradles, short stories, and then, like, a short story collection book. I mean, that itself might be worth it. Is he going to do it anyway? Um, my, it's funny, we were going through the stretch goals, and one of them was like, in a new fantasy book, and my son was like, isn't that, I mean, isn't he going to just do it anyway, right? <laughs> I thought that was funny and very uh, astute of him that, yeah, I don't think he's just going to, uh, you know, throw away anything he's doing if uh, it doesn't fund, you know. So anyway, I not to be a naysayer here, I want to be encouraging. Definitely, if this is your thing and it's, if, it's, if it sounds great to you, go for it. But uh, I'm probably going to just pass on this one just to save my money for the next special edition that I'm inevitably going to want on my shelf. Then there's a bunch of Star Wars news, so I got to jump into this. I'll go quickly because you probably already know about it. But first things first, uh, well, a couple two, a couple first things first. Uh, Ahsoka and Andor each are getting season twos. Uh, I guess that's good news. Andor looks like it's got an August 2024 release, so that's pretty good. Uh, Andor is the one that's the most highly regarded of the new stuff. I just, this is all, to me, it's just like I am so exhausted with Star Wars at this point. I'm not even catching up. I'm not, it's just, it's so much is just seems so halfway done and just like the care and the love I just don't see and I'm not convinced it's there anymore. Um, and, you know, just in the, the new movies that came out that didn't really have any like Kevin Feige kind of making sure or George Lucas making sure there was any kind of continuity that it was like you, you spent all this money just going, well, we're going to make a ton of money. So there we go. Just, just get the movie out. What's the point? Anyway, I'll get over my rant there. Uh, but anyway, what I think does look cool is Skeleton Crew. Uh, it's got Jude Law, and more importantly, Jaleel White, Urkel himself. And doing my research for this, notice that he has a Urkel Save Santa movie. It's an animated movie that just came out last year. Uh, so I'm going to be checking that out. So that's pretty cool. Skeleton Crew is kind of, it says it's kind of like a Goonies type like, you know, ragtag band. It seems pretty cool. I like that. As opposed to the other one that's been announced, the Acolyte, I do like that it has Carrie Ann Moss tied to it. I love her from The Matrix uh, and other things. Man, the description on this sounds so terrible for the Acolyte. I mean, it's like Skeleton Crew is like post Return of the Jedi. So it's in a good like in the Mandalorian kind of era, which there's tons to explore there. Uh, the Acolyte is like pre The Phantom Menace, which is like a time of peace, not really any battles. Let's look at the politics and kind of the, the kind of ex exploratory idea is, you know, how did the Sith infiltrate the Senate in the way they did? But I'm like, could you get more like a more blatant like piece of evidence that Star Wars, that there's just like, Let's uh, do anything. It's that, you know, as long as we can put Star Wars on it, we're going to make some money. And who even cares? What, like, yeah, let's do whatever era. We'll just explore everything. Who cares if it really has anything that matters? Hey, if I'm wrong on this, I will be the first to admit it. And I hope it's great. But man, does the premise just sound so boring. Finally, I just wanted to mention, uh, I did in my research, this was just mentioned, but it's man, it's not, there's like almost no details about it. So we're not talking anytime soon, but a Lando movie does sound great with Donald Glover attached, who I love, I will always love. And ever since Community, 
my favorite show. There's almost nothing there. That's one for, for Don Glover alone. I love it. And Lando, Lando does deserve some more time. Like that's a story like to get behind, not some like random time of peace. But still, uh, you know, Star Wars, it's, it's here to stay, I guess. It's still making lots of money. It's, I still love the original movies and some others, but it's getting rough, okay? Really, Rogue One was the, the new batch, like pretty much it. Uh, I need to watch Andor still, though. Editing Bryce here missed uh, kind of the biggest news in Star Wars that just came out, but there's going to be a new Ray movie in the franchise directed by Charmaine Obeid Chinoy. And uh, I, I know there's a big kerfuffle or whatever about the director. I don't really have opinions about that. The main thing is it just tells me that the that, that Kathleen Kennedy just, like, the, we should have just, just, let's all just move on from the new Star Wars movies and act like it didn't even happen. That's really the right way to go instead of doubling down on the worst part of the whole franchise. I submit even worse than Solo because I, I there's some redeeming value to Solo, but I'm sticking with it <laughs> anyway. Back to it. Those are my thoughts. Those are the newses as I see them. Anyway, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for liking and subscribing, and we will catch you next time. <laughs> Bye.